What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be working on my F3 335i. As you can see, we've got our OEM 437 wheels on here and we're finally going to be changing the suspension to try to get rid of some of this wheel gap. So I've had my F3 335i now for about eight, nine months almost. So nearing our one year mark, I really, really do truly enjoy this car. It's a perfect daily driver, but there are some things about it that I don't like. I will be doing a video at some point to discuss the things that I like and dislike about this car, but I will say one of the things I don't like is the suspension on this. So this is an M Sport model, so it does have M Sport suspension. It's not the adaptive suspension, but um, it is regular BMW OEM M Sport, but it's still kind of squirrely and kind of not confidence inspiring compared to my M3. So one of the things that I've always wanted to change since I've had this car is the suspension. I've had so many different suspension setups over the years with different cars, including BMWs, um, ranging from you know lowering springs to full coilovers to even air suspension, which I had on my previous E90 335i. So I already know the pros and cons of different suspension setups, um, but for this being a daily driven car and something that you know my girlfriend might drive around, it needs to be something that's going to be comfortable, um, but also not you know horribly low and something that's going to be scraping around on every little thing so it needed to be comfortable and it needed to be functional so let's show you guys what we decided to go with after hours and hours of research on the forums and on facebook pages um, i've kind of decided that it would be wise for me to go with bilstein b8 dampeners and h r lowering springs so there are two different types of h r lowering springs there's the race version which is the red springs that are extremely low and then there's the blue version which is a sport spring which is a moderate drop so when it comes to suspension there are a ton of different opinions and preferences on you know ride quality on stiffness on the height and i wanted something that was going to be functional obviously and so that's how i settled on the hnr sport springs it's kind of a moderate drop it's 1.3 inches in the front and 0.7 inches in the rear like i said this is a m sport car so the drop is not going to be as crazy as it would be if you were had a non m sport car um, i think the drop is a little bit bigger i think it's uh, one and a half inches in the front and one inch in the back so not going to be a crazy huge drop here but again it's going to be functional additionally there are a lot of conflicting opinions on h r springs a lot of people either love it or hate it it seems but one common denominator is the fact that these springs work really really well with bilstein b8 dampeners i also thought to myself if i'm going to go in here and change the suspension out and change the springs and take everything apart i might as well go in and change the struts as well so it only makes sense to do it all at one time um, plus, you know, I, I was kind of afraid to just do springs alone because of the comments and, and all of the opinions on how harsh the ride quality would be with just lowering springs, even though the H&R springs are designed to work with your OEM struts. But I think pairing it with the Bilstein B8 dampeners is going to be a game changer. So really excited to see how that feels. I was even considering a Bilstein B12 suspension, which is essentially B8 dampeners that have been revalved and paired with Eibach lowering springs. I highly considered the B12 suspension just because, you know, in my mind, Bilstein and Eibach teamed up together to make one kit. And so they redesigned everything and they took the time and the engineering and R&D in order to make a kit that made sense. However, the drop is not that low. It's almost pointless to me to actually do that. Um, I'm sure the handling is a lot better with that kit, but I wanted a slightly more aggressive drop. And so that's why I decided to do the H&R Springs. So without further ado, let's show you guys what we have. So these are brand new Bilstein B8 dampeners, two in the front, two in the rear, and H&R Sport Springs. So these are the front. As you can tell, these are used. I've actually had these sitting around for several months now, um, just kind of in preparation for this, but there's only, I think there were only like three or 4,000 miles on these. So basically brand new, got them for a really good deal. So it is really, really simple to take suspension apart. I've done it plenty of times over the course of different cars. Um, I've retained, you know, the OEM struts and put, you know, lowering springs on in the past, so not a big deal. But um, for this, I'm being a little bit lazy and I figured it might be a better idea to keep all of my stock suspension intact for whatever reason, if I need to switch back for, for anything. So that's kind of why I decided to buy this kit here from ECS Tuning. This is a full kit, which will allow us to actually put all of this together uh, before putting it on the car. So let's show you guys what we have here. All right, like I said, this kit is from ECS Tuning. It has all of the parts and pieces that we need in order to build our new suspension here on the table. So you can see here, this is the kit from ECS Tuning, cup kit, coilover, 
uh, installation kit with spring pads. So basically it's all of the stock components that we'll need in order to put this together right on the table so we don't need to take anything apart, hopefully. Uh, but there you go. So part number is right there if you want to do it this way. So just to take out everything out of the box here and show you guys, these are the dust shields on the fronts. So ECS tuning is making this a lot easier on me, that's for sure. So some of these products are going to be OEM BMW or they're going to be this Lem Forder version, which is a BMW equivalent. Um, let's see here. This is this is going to be the upper OEM strut mount. So there's two of these. Okay, and then this is the upper strut mount for the rear. As you can see, it comes with pretty much everything else. So really the only thing we need is the uh, rear bump stops and the dust shield from the rear. All right, so now that we've got all of the necessary parts and pieces, I'm basically going to spend today's video showing you guys how to build your suspension from the ground up. All right, so we've got pretty much everything unboxed and unwrapped here with the exception of these bolts. So these are all gonna be OEM replacement bolts. We may or may not be using all of these or none of them. It just kind of depends on what we're gonna do here. We're gonna go ahead and assemble the front if you guys are looking to purchase a set of Bilstein B8 dampeners for your F30-335, these are the part numbers that I am using. So these are the fronts and they're identical from left to right. So you can get two of those and then for the rear, this is the part number for the rear. There are a ton of different vendors that sell Bilstein suspensions, so um, there isn't really one good spot to purchase from. Just kind of depends on what kind of deal you can get. But I will put a link in the description below if you want to go to ECS Tuning's website and purchase a installation kit. They also carry Bilstein B8 uh, dampeners as well, and I also think that they have some H&R springs. So if you are looking for a one-stop shop, ECS Tuning carries all of these items. All right, so this is what our new Bilstein front looks like. The notorious yellow. Wish this was red, that would be pretty cool since I've got a gray and red theme going on, but it is what it is. But again, this is the front. And the great thing about Bilstein suspension is, uh, if you didn't notice, we don't have any bump stops in our kit here. But the great thing about Bilstein suspension, at least in the front, the front has internal bump stops. So if you actually were to take this apart, um, you'd actually see a bump stop down here. but So we don't actually need a replacement bump stop. We don't need to use the OEM one because I actually thought about buying um, bump stops since I didn't see any in this actual kit. But then I realized that these are actually internal, so we're good to go there. So let's get this one assembled. All right, so the first thing I want to do, I'm checking this, and of course, as I mentioned before, we may or may not be using some of these OEM bolts that we have as replacements. Um, this does come with a top nut here, and it, I did verify that this is actually 19 millimeter. So Bilstein uses typically uh, one millimeter larger than um, the OEM struts. So this is gonna be a 19. So we won't actually be use, utilizing this 18 millimeter here, uh, but whatever, no big deal. So the kit may have some additional items that you um, may or may not use. It just depends on the suspension setup that you're gonna go with. But again, for my case, I didn't wanna take anything apart. So this just kind of made sense to do it this way. But go ahead and unscrew this 19. And then you'll see there's this little washer here, so don't lose that. For this next part, you want to take your front lower spring pad and install. You'll see a couple of different little holes here. Uh, those correlate to the back of the spring pad. You'll see we've got a little nub here. This is going to fit inside of one of these. So Bilstein uses basically some universal um, mounting points here. So we're only going to utilize the one since we've got the one nub. So go ahead and put that on. Pretty self-explanatory. Should compression fit right into place here. Just make sure it's all the way down. And you can actually see on the bottom how this will fit in. So you see the little nub that comes out right there. And this only goes in one direction. So that'll sit just in place, just like that. And then from here, you'll actually see there's a little stopper on this little rubber pad. Uh, this, the edge of the spring will actually sit right here. So once you get the spring on here, you just wanna make sure it's seated properly. Um, the next part for the actual spring itself. So this is an H&R sports spring. Um, you can see the H&R logo right here. Basically, both of these fronts are gonna be identical. Um, depending on your suspension setup, it might have 
uh, an indication on which side is up or bottom. Um, so it just kind of depends on your orientation. But obviously, since the lettering is facing this way, this is going to be the top, this is going to be the bottom. So we can go ahead and take this and drop this on here. And you just want to make sure everything's lined up and sitting in its spot. So as you can see, so as you can see, the uh, edge of the spring will sit right here at the end of the pad and it should fit right into place. So it'll wobble around until we actually secure it and fasten it down. So before we go any further, um, I will mention that you'll probably need to get a spring compressor in order to actually get this bolt back on. Uh, we want to go ahead and compress the spring um, as much as we possibly can basically in order to get this top nut on here. So um, this, again, this is basically what it's going to look like when it's seated, but um, we need to use a spring compressor. Now, AutoZone does rent tools for free, so this was like a $50 deposit, and once I take it back, I get all my money back. So, uh, free to use, and basically what we're going to do is clamp down each side of the spring and compress it uh, as much as possible in order for us to put the 19 millimeter bolt on top, and uh, including our top hat and all that stuff. So, let's go ahead and compress the spring. Here's what a spring compressor looks like if you've never actually worked with one of these before. I've used these plenty of times in the past with all my different suspension setups, um, so I'm really familiar with how these work. Uh, but basically what we're gonna do is put, put this around um, one side of the spring and one side of the spring on this one, and then you'll see there's basically a nut here that we can tighten. And as you tighten, it will actually spin this together, and these two will go together in order to compress the spring. So one on each side. Here's how I'm gonna do it basically. You can see there's little locking collar pins here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one here and one here and then push the collar pin, locking pins down so that it doesn't move around. And then we can go ahead and tighten this. I'm gonna hand tighten this first one on each side and then we'll use an impact to do the rest. And then we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. I try to keep it as even as possible. So you may need to play around with the position of where these spring compressors go because uh, you're fighting kind of against space. So as you can see, we've got a little mounting bracket here that we don't want to run into. Plus, we want to grab as many of these coils as we can. Uh, you also run against here, and then you also need to have some space on top for when the top hat goes on here. So just be mindful of that. I've kind of moved it around a little bit. Um, and at this point we can actually use an impact or just do it by hand with a ratchet, uh, which is what I'm kind of doing right now. I'm kind of holding this in place and tightening it down. All right, just to make my life a little bit easier, I'm using an impact and this is gonna be a 19 millimeter for this spring compressor here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and forth, tightening both of these kind of simultaneously as far as I can. on so also the new Bilstein comes with like I said it comes with a 19 millimeter nut it also comes with a washer so don't lose the washer slide this on and again you want to make sure that the spring is sitting in the end of the um, strut pad here strut seat, so it'll sit just like that. From here, we can actually put our top hat on. Okay, we've got everything seated, so at this point, we can go ahead and put our dust shield on. Slide it over. And it actually, same thing, it has a little uh, seat stop here where the spring will sit, so make sure that's lined up. So, top hat on. This is lined up, there we go. And then if you have a washer, use the washer. And then the supplied bolt. 
Then we can go ahead and screw this on. Cool. All right, so you just want to make sure everything is properly lined up, the spring is in place, and it's seated properly. So at this point, we can go ahead and loosen our spring compressor. When removing the spring compressor, try to make sure you do both sides kind of simultaneously. Otherwise, if you do this one side completely all the way, the spring is going to kind of tilt and probably slide out of place. So we want to do it simultaneously. A little bit there. And then I might have to use some other tools here. I'm limited on space. Have this one out at this point. All right, one. Get this other one out. It helps to have multiple tools, whether that's ratcheting wrenches, opening wrench, impact driver, just kind of depends on what you're doing, so there we go. And also, you want to make sure you have your top nut on here before you remove this, otherwise the spring uh, could compress and this top hat could go flying off and uh, kill someone, so <laughs> keep that in mind as well. All right, so now we're getting a little stuck. There we go. There we go. All right, so this one's done. Um, everything is seated properly. You may get some scuffs on it just with the spring compressor. That's just the way it goes. But as you can see, I got a couple little scuffs down here, but no big deal. This is on the back side, so I'm not going to notice that. The only additional thing we need to do is tighten the top nut, which is 47 foot pounds. But we will do that once we actually get this on the car. Otherwise, this is basically just going to spin the whole time. So a little bit easier to put that on. Um, when it's on the car. So at this point we're good. I'm going to use a little bit of detail spray and a microfiber towel just to get all my fingerprints off and we can move on to the next one. All right, so I finally assembled both of them. They're both ready to go, ready to be installed on the car. Everything's nice and secured. The, again, the only thing I need to really do once I get these actually on the car is to actually torque down the center bolt there. For now, I just have them pretty tight. We'll be doing that tomorrow. The install is going to be tomorrow. Uh, this should save us a lot of time. Um, that's kind of whole, the whole reason why I purchased this kit from ECS Tuning. That way I could assemble the whole thing ahead of time, you know, do the spring compressor and all that garbage since that's the most time consuming part. And uh, we'll just have to plug and play those. The rear, the rear we have um, all of these here. Got some parts and pieces that we need to assemble and um, that's about it. The only thing that we're missing here is the actual uh, the actual dust boots in the rear, but really simple to take that one apart since the strut and the spring are separate. So um, we don't need to use a spring compressor or anything for that. So we'll take that apart and take the dust shield off of there and then swap it onto the new one. So I'm gonna bring all this stuff tomorrow and we'll be good to go. All right guys, that just about wraps up today's video on how to assemble your suspension. I'm gonna actually install all this tomorrow, so that'll be a separate video. If you guys want to check that out, be on the lookout for that soon. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns on anything that we've done today, please let me know. Otherwise, we will see you guys on the next one. Stay tuned for the install video. We'll see you then.